Hey, what's up? John Sonmez here, and I have another interview for you guys. Uh, this guest is a guest that has been been here on this YouTube channel uh, more than once. Uh, his name is Evan Carmichael, and he has an awesome, awesome YouTube channel. I know that a lot of you that are subscribed to my channel are subscribed to his channel because we're we're all we're both about uh, motivating people, you know, uh, achieving our, our best uh, performance, you know, becoming better versions of ourselves, and and you know, and Evan does this in a in a fantastic way uh, with with his inspiring videos, especially taking like the success from so many successful people, condensing this down, you know, getting the best clips of all these people. I, I love watching, you know, the, the videos that, that he puts out. And it's funny because it, it's almost always, it's like, I see, I'm like, oh yeah, 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 this is the guy, you know, like it's it's all the same people that I have on my radar that I that I truly respect. And, and it's like, I get I get that dose of like of these fantastic clips from from all these different people, uh, which I really appreciate. So, uh, so with that, <laughs> welcome Evan. Uh, I love back. that, man. It's always great to be here. I saw the new awesome channel trailer that that you put up on yours, and uh, I saw I was in there for a couple seconds. So thank you for that. And with everything you just said, I think I feel like I need to make a channel trailer and, and put that in there, man. That was that was great. <laughs> cool, awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, I was pretty excited. It, it just came out this morning, and that it's, it's fun. It, I I love that kind of theatrical trailer. I, I have to admit, like I was started watching my 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 old trailer like I'll, I'll watch it sometimes just to re-inspire myself like to be like okay this is what you're made of like this is what your purpose and mission is so it's it's kind of fun it, it's cool to have something like that that's cool. I, I love it when you can get to the point where you're creating content that inspires yourself it, it took me 750 videos until i mm -hmm. made one that inspired myself uh the first like couple hundred i was just completely embarrassed by i couldn't i could barely watch it but 750 and then I was like, man, that's a really good video. What I love about yours is, is showing the journey. Like you were overweight and the pictures and then the workout. It's like, man, I, I didn't know that side of you. And it's, it's awesome to see how far you've come on your journey too. And, and it's definitely an inspiration to lots of people watching. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's funny too. Like, I mean, like you're saying with the videos too, it's like you watch them over time. I don't know if you've, you've done this yourself, but you know, if you've gone through your old videos and kind of seen, and then you see how you change as a person, not just like physically, but just the way you present yourself on the camera and just like how comfortable you are or, or just how your mind, you know, just your, I don't know. I've seen drastic changes in, in time. I'm, I'm sure, you know, what's your experience? Have you seen the same thing with your, with your stuff or? hundred percent. And I, I mean, I think you picked it up so quickly. How many videos have you done? Uh, I'm, I'm pretty close to like 2000 at this point. 2, I'm doing, I do like yeah. two to three a day. Yeah. I love it, man. There's, there's not a lot of people who are, who are doing it at that frequency. So I love it. Um, you know, uh, shout out to a new collaboration we're doing. I saw you made a video that we're going to include in one of my videos and like he gets on, he films it one take, no mistakes, close down the camera. It's like, I love it, man. John's a pro. <laughs> this is great. So many times you've got to do editing and cuts and be like, Oh no, 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 not that. You know, so it's, it's awesome. Um, I don't think I had any real natural talent for any of this stuff. You know, I have 6,000 videos now that I've recorded. Oh, wow. Wow. And so, man. Wow. I mean, but, you, but like anything, like if you did 6,000, chin-ups your arms are gonna get big like it's just yeah. gonna happen right like you, you can't not get good at something if you practice it six thousand times and so i think a lot of people even when i was on before on your channel like you were really good i think i think people can pick it up a lot faster than i did but it's just putting in the work and and doing it consistently to get better and, and that's a great equalizer right it's like so many people complain they're like i always think of it as like you know if you ever play D D, like rolling up your stats and it's like Oh, well, you know, I don't, like I used to play with this group of guys and they'd be like, you spend like a day re-rolling, re-rolling. And it's like, until I get the perfect sets. And it's like, it doesn't, it matters when you're level one, like if you got an 18 strength or whatever, but when you're level 20, it didn't matter what your starting stats were. It's like, it's a, the great equalizer is the time and the effort and the hard work that you put in because then like the natural talent, like, yeah, at the beginning, it's, it's really valuable, but towards the you know once you put in all this time then it, it really levels out like it doesn't matter what you started with you know yeah you, you can get really good at something if you want to and you can blow past people who have even decades of experience sometimes just because you're willing to put in more work right now yeah yeah cool so tell me about uh, this is crazy i i didn't even realize that you had six thousand videos 
okay, how how many years, how many, what's your frequency, your cadence of, of producing videos? And, you know, how do you get to the point of 6,000? That's amazing. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm really bad looking back. I don't really pay attention so much to stats and like milestones and all that stuff. I, I'm, I don't know, I'm just locked in like where I am now, where I'm going. Um, I looked it up recently though, because somebody asked me the question and, and it was nine years ago I posted my first video. Oh, and if you asked me today, I would have guessed like six, you know, it just, it doesn't like, I don't know where those three years went. Like, it, I feel like it hasn't been that long. Um, when I first started posting, it was a hobby. I was trying to feel like anything else. Like you don't just, if you're making three videos a day now, two videos a day now, you didn't start with two videos every right. day. Like you start, or if you get your Twitter account, the first day you get it, you just get in the name. You're protecting John Sanmez. Somebody else can take it, and then you experiment. So I was I wasn't going hardcore at the beginning. I was just kind of dipping my toes in. I took lots lots of breaks. Uh, when I decided to take it seriously, though, I don't know. I'll guess three years ago. Maybe it was longer. <laughs> uh, that's when I I brought on a team to help me, and I was going from a video a week to video a day, and then slowly ramped that up to two a day, and now we're at three a day. For the past year plus, we've probably been at three a day. Oh wow! Okay. I, I would do more if we had the content. Um, we basically look at every series and is it leading to growth for the channel or not? And, and just being ruthless about it. If it's not helping the channel grow, we cut the series. Like if we can't find a way to improve it and it's not helping the channel grow, the series is gone. No matter much, like if I love it, great. But if I love something, but the customers don't, I just have a hobby, right? Yeah, like yeah. you may love Dungeons and Dragons, but if people don't want to pay to like watch you play it, you just got a hobby to do with your buddies, which is fine. But this is also a business, and so the videos that I make have to lead to growth for the channel. Okay, awesome! Wow, I didn't wow three a day. That's that's amazing, and it's it's interesting because a lot of people, you know, say I, I often get you know pushback from tons of people that are like, oh, you're you're producing too many like two a day or two two three days. It's just too much content, and you should just focus more on on the quality. And you know, my I'm. I'm always like, well, you know, this is this is uh, first of all, that's how you get quality is you produce a, a lot of stuff. And like, you know, pro being prolific as hell is like it's like a, it's a success strategy. So it's good to have someone else that I can reference back to. I'm like, look, look at Evan Carmichael's channel. It's it's <laughs> way bigger than mine. And look, he's putting out three videos a day. And that's, you know, that's one of the things like you know, if you're, I'm, I'll be the shield for you, man. Yeah, I'll be your shield <laughs> anytime. I'm happy to. Um, I think it's I like adjusting it. people's mindsets from. Mm -hmm. I am not a show. I am a channel. Right. This is a YouTube channel, not a YouTube show. And I don't need everybody to watch every show on my channel. Right. 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 Like if you're, like if you that. love Fox, you're not watching every single, you're not, you don't have Fox on all day long. Right. So you, so you pick the best content that you like. Exactly. Right. And so now every, every series that you make has to be good. You're working on improving it. If, if you're putting stuff up that people absolutely hate, you know, if it's John Sanmez playing Dungeons and Dragons and you're losing subscribers every day for that, then maybe you kill that series, right? right. But just that idea of, I think people are too locked into the mode of I'm a, I'm a show and I only have one piece of content where you need to think bigger and you need to think of yourself as a channel. So I think of myself as, as Fox, as, as CNN, as ABC. Uh, and I, I, would, I would love to have content 24 hours a day, like new videos always going yeah. up. Like three videos a day is nothing. I just right, can't yeah, make yeah. enough quality. Like I don't have enough series that I can't do. I can't do like for the top tens. You mentioned those, you know, I can't do three top tens a day. We don't have enough. There's not enough people exactly, out there yeah. to get enough content to do three a day. But if there were, then I would. Right. And so I think, I think that perspective shift is super important. And for your audience too, you don't need to watch every video. Like, don't be obsessed about watching every single video. Because even for you, you know, you're writing, you're making these great videos. Uh, here are the best books that that people need to read. Uh, great. Like, you want people to then watch your video, consume the content, and then go off and do something. Like, exactly. I don't want you on my yeah. channel all day long. Like, if you're sick or you whatever, great. But I don't want everybody on my YouTube channel all day long. For both of us, like as creators, you want people consuming the content and then making some kind of change in their life. And so I'm not offended if somebody doesn't watch every single video on my channel. That's okay. What I want you to do is go off and take some kind of action around it. And so three, three a day is nothing. When I go to YouTube events, 
I talked to channels too, who, uh, I remember going to ClamorCon, which is, oh, you can come to ClamorCon this year. It's a hundred thousand plus subscribers. It's an oh, event okay. in uh, Palm Springs. It's a, it's a private event for hundred K plus subscribers. Um, okay. we'll, we'll connect offline. We'll like find an invite for you. Um, okay. so it's an industry event and I remember I went last year and I had, I don't know, half a million or something. And I was talking to guys who were bigger than me and they say, yeah, you got, you got to go daily. And they're looking at me like I'm crazy that you have, they have to go daily. And in the past year now, like I've passed them on what they're doing. And in my head, I'm telling them to go daily, but that's small. Like you need to be going, I'm just afraid to tell them what I actually think. Right? Like if you think I'm crazy for one a day, you should be at two or three. And it's not that you can do that right now, maybe with your with your resources, your or your talent or your abilities, but it's the goal. Like by yeah. the end of 2018, how do you get to going daily? Or by the end of 2018, how do you get to two a day or three? A day, right. And that and I have eight people on my YouTube team, right? It's not me doing everything all myself. That's not possible. But just like every business, right? You build a business and you scale it and you bring on people to support you. And so you figure what you're best at and you get the people around you to to figure out your weaknesses. Um, and so I can do three videos a day because I have eight people on my team. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, again, I, if I could go 24 hours a day, like every other channel on TV, I would. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that, that's really interesting. I mean, I, I like your perspective on this. I remember hearing the story of of CNN originally, right? Because CNN was the first the first news, that, that whole idea, like a news network, a 24-hour news network. It was insane. I forget where I read it. I read it in some book and they were talking about the story and how it was just like, everyone was like, this is crazy. Like, why, why would you want news 24 seven news comes on at seven o'clock or eight o'clock news or whatever it is. And, uh, you know, and they, you know, they changed the way that we consume, right? They, they, you know, shifted that, uh, you know, and now, now they've shifted it again. You know, now CNN is, I, I don't know. I think it's a joke, but, <laughs> but they, but they, but they shifted everyone's viewpoint, right? Because everyone thought that was crazy. But what you're saying makes a lot of sense. I mean, if you had enough content to just have 24 hour YouTube, you know, on your channel, and I like that mindset of thinking of this channel, right? I think a lot of a lot of YouTubers think, well, they call they either call themselves YouTubers and they think of it as you know, not not a channel, like you said, and and they don't and they think of themselves as content creators as opposed to business owners. And that's the other, I think, big transformation too, is like, I've talked to so many YouTube, uh, to so many people with with large YouTube channels and they're just like, oh, I'm a content creator. I'm like, no, you're, you're an entrepreneur, you're a business person. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm in the business of scaling businesses. Yeah. This is a, this is a business and it's always been my approach from day one because I, I had built other businesses, invested in other businesses. And I think for a lot of people, this is their first business. And they, they have a hard time thinking. And like me too, I had a hard time thinking bigger in my first business. But as you build it and you get success and you start to see what's possible, then you bring that vision, I guess, to the next business that you're trying to do. You want to make it bigger and better. Even the ideas of uh, responding to comments. Yeah. We respond to every comment on the channel. It's not me doing it. Right. I respond to some of them. My team goes in every day, responds to comments as themselves. They don't say Evan. And then they save the ones that I need to see. I told them any, any suggestions, any feedback I want to see. If it's right. somebody just saying, I love uh, Elon Musk. Great video. Great. I don't need to see that one. Like you guys can respond and keep it positive, right? Just like in any business, if you start a shoe store and customers are walking in the door, you want to talk to them. And as you exactly. scale, you can't talk to every customer. So you bring on a team to talk to the customers. Like this is basics of business, but a lot of people, and it's their first company, they, they don't, they're not thinking that way. And I think it, it just creates uh, enormous opportunity. I don't think my channel should exist. I think I'm doing well, but, but I'm, it's just because the CNNs of the world are late to the game. Like they should be crushing all of us. Right. You're right. CNN yep. could make videos 24 hours a day on YouTube and crush, crush me. I'm winning because they're slow. And right. so all of the, all of the creators who are making content, which is, which is, you know, really good. They're eventually going to get crushed too. If they don't continue to up their game. My hope is that I get good enough and build enough of a team up that by the time the big networks actually catch up, I have enough of a base to, to sustain and start to win. But 
you look at the it, it's already starting like the, the late night shows are putting their uh -huh. content and they're crushing it and ellen comes on and puts her content right like the tv shows are already starting to put their content on and so if you if you are trying to be a talk show host like you want to create your own talk show on youtube it's still possible now but now you're now you're going to start going up against ellen and steve harvey and guys who are really 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 good at it and it's only going to get more and more difficult and so like there's still a window there's still the time now but if you're not treating it like a business uh the people who have the passion and do treat it like a business just like in every other industry they're going to win exactly yeah no that's a great way of thinking of it because it you know it's, it's inevitable I, I think you're i think you're absolutely right that's a really good way of thinking about it uh, but but there is opportunity here that's the other piece of it uh, so so about the business side of it you know, obviously we don't have to delve into numbers, but but I but I am curious, and I think I think a lot of people listening would probably be curious too. So, how do you run your your business as as a YouTube channel? As far as like, what are what are your revenue sources? Like, uh, you know, you're you're a business person, so you're obviously not running it just off of ads, or I would assume not off of ads. But uh, what's what's kind of the engines that you have to like to to really turn this from just something that you're you know a hobby to something that's actually a business where you can actually employ eight people on your team? Yeah. So I was fortunate in that when I started, I didn't need YouTube to be a, a revenue driver for me. It was not. It was it was something I was testing out and then see if it was going to work or not. Um, I had a successful business with my website and my previous company. Um, and I also hate spending money till I'm making money. So right. when I started, it was, I did everything. Like I had a successful business already running. I was making money from that company. I could have hired a photographer or a videographer and bought the camera and bought all this stuff, but I didn't. I just started myself and, uh, and sucked, but worked my way through it. And as I started making some money, the early money was, was ads. Um, and that gave me enough to hire a part-time editor at the beginning. Yeah. And then as I started building the brand, really, you, you notice as you start building up attention, my entire business model is kicking up a ton of noise in my industry. Mm -hmm. If you are an entrepreneur and you watch YouTube with any kind of regularity, you've come across my videos. You may not like my videos. You may not subscribe to my channel, but you've seen a couple of my videos right. right and so because of that awareness i'm able to monetize it in a whole bunch of different ways in ways that i never thought so advertising brings in some but it's not the primary uh, i work with brands i work with companies like sage uh multi-billion dollar company the ceo and i get on every uh, month and we do a hangout for my audience not pitching product I turn away more brand deals than I bring in because most companies are like, hey, can you sell our design services or our whatever? And for me, if I'm not actually using it, I don't sell it. So I use Sage in my business. Uh, I got pitched book deals. Hey, we want to write a book. I didn't. I never thought I wanted to write a book. It was never right. on my like bucket list of I want to write a book. Uh, I get asked to join boards of companies. By the way, I got, right? the, I got the new one here. We'll have to talk about this in a little bit here. So. There it is, yeah. right? Uh, I get asked to do speaking. I never thought I would get speaking gigs because yeah. who hires speakers, big corporations? What my message is go be an entrepreneur. Who's going to hire me to come <laughs> back to there? Right? Like yeah. go be an entrepreneur. You know, it, anyway. So, um, the point of my entire business model is when you have a ton of attention, people find you and they want to work with you. And then you right. can be selective over who you're going to work with. So I didn't seek any of this stuff out. It, it was not from the beginning to have, here's exactly how I'm going to monetize my channel. Here it's, it's here. It's all laid out. And I never thought I'd build, uh, my goal was never to be a huge YouTuber. That was not my aspiration. Uh, but in whatever business you're in, if you are known as the person in your industry, even for people watching, like you don't have to have a million subscribers. I'm in a, I'm in a bigger industry of entrepreneurship, you know, even looking at what you did in the programming world, right? Like to be known as the guy in the programming world could really help. And now moving into like personal development and other stuff, like if you get known as the guy or the girl in that industry, then you can start attracting attention and deals will come to you. Uh, I'm not the sales guy. I don't pick up the phone and call anybody. I struggled and failed at the beginning doing that, calling on brands say, Hey, you want to work with me? Can we do some kind of deal together? Uh, it never worked out. And then other brands were just finding me. Exactly. And so 
instead of wasting my time doing the outreach and and it also speaks to my skill set like this works for me because i'm a much better marketer than a salesman uh, other people are great at sales. So like, if that's you, if you love cold calling and like, just go all in and do that. But other brands are finding me. And so I said, you know what, I'm just going to put all my energy into making great content. I'll just kick up more noise and more opportunities will find me. Yeah. I, I love that. I love that philosophy. It, it's the same one you know, when I do some coaching and, and, and I don't, you know, one of the things I do is coaching and people, I don't advertise coaching, right. It's like people just come to me and they, and, and you know, that's, it's the same type of thing, but one of the things that, that I always I always coach people on is, you know, my my philosophy for building a business, which is a lot different than I think most people w where they focus on the product or, you know, at first. And it sounds like we've got a similar mindset in like build an audience. If you build an audience, you've got like you've got so many business opportunities. There's there's so many ways that you can make money or, or sell something or do something and provide because you're providing service to a group of people. And if you've got the audience, it, it's like you've got a business for life. Like if people follow you, if you build a brand and a reputation and you've got an audience and, you know, you, you've got like what, what you, there's opportunities come to you. You don't have to chase after them. You get, uh, you know, you've got multiple ways to serve that audience. Whereas if you just like say, oh, I'm just going to build this product, then it's like, well, now you've got all the problem of like, yeah, sure. Let's say you're going to have market fit. How are you going to sell it? Like you got to find find people to buy the stuff. Whereas if you have the audience, there's they want you to make stuff. They're like, hey, Evan, write a damn book. Give me a book. I want something. Like, but let me. I want to buy stuff from you. So make something so I can buy it. You know. Yeah, I think most people who are in our field when they're starting, they try to monetize too soon and they try to monetize in the wrong way. And so the way you're doing it with coaching is great. Where people are, you're making great videos. You're giving amazing advice to help people on their journey. If somebody's saying, hey, John, do you do coaching? And other people start seeing and say, hey, you know what? Now, do you want to do coaching or not is a different different option. But that's how you start where most people would say, OK, I'm going to I'm going to do an ebook. I'm going to launch an ebook on how to do X, Y, Z, where nobody has asked them for this ebook, but they're right. going to go out and make the ebook. So you spend a ton of time working on this ebook and then you create a landing page and the title sequence and the, and the email follow ups. So like you have all the like how long did that take to, to do? You launch it, nobody buys anything. Right, exactly. Because nobody was asking for it in the first place. But then what do people do? They double down to like, you know what? It's it, My headline was wrong. The right. headline was wrong. I need to tweak the copy. And you're still working on this landing page. The problem is nobody's visiting it because they don't care about that product, right? Exactly. You want to listen to what people care about and see if that's a match with what you want to do. So if you're making videos and somebody says, hey, John, do you do coaching? And you say, yeah, you know what? That's cool. I'd like to try coaching. I think I can help these guys one on one. Great. Now you have an opportunity. If you're looking at making an a ebook, an e product, the best one is going to come from the problems that your coaching clients are facing. Right. Right. Like if the same coaching clients, if they're coming back and say, John, it's always this. It's always, it's always fear of failure. It's always fear of failure. Like I can't get over that. Hey, guess what your ebook should be? Right. How to get over the fear of failure. Right. Where most people, uh, again, they're just creating out of their head without actually listening to the audience, without listening to their customers. And they end up creating products that, and I feel bad because it's such a time investment to make a great product. And I hate seeing these, these creators make a product and then it doesn't go anywhere and then they feel defeated. Exactly. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Well, and, and you know, I mean, just like looking at like, like your book here, right? I mean, the excellent book, which we'll, we'll, let's get into this a little bit, but um, you know, I, I, I read through this and like, I, I love the, you know, the top 10 rules for success. I mean, this is a valuable book. And but regardless of how valuable the book this is, and, and your one word book also as well. By the way, I have to you know side note here, the bulldog right came yeah. from, from that right from one word because I couldn't figure out my uh, one word. Yeah. And I had Lily on, and she was kind of coaching me through some of the one word stuff, and it just became apparent that bulldog was was the word. Right? Bulldog, so, I like it. Yeah, okay, cool. That's kind of cool. But um, but yeah, so as valuable as this book is, right? I, and I've I've got books too, right? You know, is uh, the books I I wrote are it, the, the thing that makes this a good a, a best selling book, right? You know, that, that sells copies of this book is the audience, right? It's like you you could you you could launch this exact same book, and if you don't have your your huge YouTube channel and huge following and, and audience, it's going to fall totally flat. Even though it's the same quality, same great book, but you know what I mean? The same thing, you know, with, with mine with my books like is and i think people just don't realize that they, they think that if they build some really good product or, or you know you know there's how many books published now because you know per year because self-publishing and whatnot but 
it's it's not about that, right? It's it's about I mean, you know, so, so definitely building the thing that that someone wants, but you have the audience, you, you're going to have something to sell, or you're going to have people to sell to, right? Yeah, and if you look at the publishing world, so your one word I did with Penguin Random House, huge publisher, mm -hmm. and the first question that they always want to ask is, what's what's the audience you're bringing? Yeah, what's your footprint? Now, you know, I had an agent, my agent did all that work, kind of figuring all the details out, but there are very few first time authors who get published and almost none who get any kind of advance. If you're looking for that as a writer, exactly. uh, just period. But if you have the audience, then they're willing to listen to you. And, and it's, you know, the purists would say, well, it doesn't matter. It matters about just the content of the book and the quality, right? And the quality of the writing. And yes, you need a quality product too, but to, to win, in your career to win in business, you have to also understand the game that is being played, which is, this is what publishers want. So if you're an author, you want to get your book out there, start building an audience while you're writing your book. Like I right. built my audience while I was writing. I took me a year almost to write the book every week. I'd make a, a video. Of, I would write my book at whole foods at a cafe. It was looking about 25 minutes to walk to the cafe from my place. And I would take out my camera and and talk about what i was going to do today and then start yeah. answering some questions and so i'm taking people on the journey of me writing my book and then when the book comes out there's this whole group of people who've been waiting for this book to come out for you know almost a year every single week with content and so if you're writing the book you want to immediately start thinking about the marketing like from the day you start writing you're thinking about the marketing and that's exactly. going to come from you building your audience yeah, look at the, another good example that is Andy Weir, right? The the Martian. It started out as a blog, right? That he was posting this on, and then it became the book. But he had such a big following from the blog as he was writing these entries that it became that book, and it became, I mean, hell, it became a movie, right? And and so he, I mean, his success came from exactly the strategy that that you're you're describing there. But, and uh, you're and you're always gonna have outliers too. You're always yeah. gonna have the person who just gets a book deal. And it takes off like there's right. always going to be some of those people, but it's not the norm. Right. And so, you know, you might be able to win a race in sandals, but like, I'd rather have awesome shoes. Like you want to give yourself the best chance to win. And so if you want to win at that game, you might be the one in a million who gets that book deal without having an audience because some people are still doing it, but it's just so hard to do it that way. Give yourself the best shot to win. Exactly. Yeah, totally agree. So I got to uh, talk a little bit about this, about your book a little bit. It, uh, one one thing that I, th I thought was funny that uh, I'd like to point out is um, when I first picked up the book and I looked at the cover, I was okay. like, Steve Jobs has a mohawk. <laughs> it's You got to look at it like you see how okay. because of the black. I thought yeah. that was funny. And then I and then I looked at it a little closer and I was like, oh, no, 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 that's just the black. But it was it was kind of cool. I was like, wait a minute. This looks with them with the mohawk, you know, and the uh, you know the uh, the scruff. He, he looks like uh, kind of a badass, like you know. I like it. I like you know. <laughs> nobody has said that, but but you know what, John Sanmez notices different things. I yeah. love that man. That's cool. I but, see yeah, it. I, now. Oh, I can't ahead. unsee the mohawk. Yeah, no, now you can't now unsee that's it. All I see. <laughs> So, um, but yeah, so I really, I was really excited when, when I heard that this was, uh, was the book that you're making, because, you know, as I, as I mentioned in the intro, I really like the top 10, the, those, those videos that you do the, because they're, it's just, it's just great because there's so many people, there's so many entrepreneurs to follow and, you know, and just, just fantastic people, successful people. And it's like, I, I don't have time to consume all their content. Right. I, I, you know, I know this person, I read some biographies, but I can't read all the biographies and I can't see all the clips from, from all this. So I, I love that you've already gone out there and you've compiled the, these, these things. And, and I, and it's from, from two perspectives, one, because it's so valuable to me and two, because I, I'm thinking about, man, this is so genius because some people are chasing after, you know, and I do it sometimes too. It's like to chase after people to get up to interview on my YouTube channel. But you're like, whoa, you know what? I can just, I can just extrapolate what their top 10 tips of success are. They don't have to tell me, they don't have to come on the channel. I can go and find that and I can make that. And it's just, it's, it's genius uh, to, to do it that way. But um, so, so the book, I thought it was cool that you took a bunch of the, uh, of the ones uh, and, and got their, their top 10 ones. 
and you know also you know leveraging the content that you've already created i love that idea as well so uh yeah so tell me about kind of the, the idea behind creating this book and, and and where it came from and and it looks like it's self-published this time too as well yeah so so the idea with the series in general was i wanted to be around more success i you know i wanted to be pushed to do more mm -hmm. and when i would watch a video from elon musk or these guys like it made me think a little bit bigger which i wanted to push in my life because i've had some success and the people around me are, are cheering me on but nobody's saying like evan you kind of suck man like let's go let's go harder you could, you could be doing more right um the problem was if i sat down and watched elon musk videos you know he's not a great speaker He's not right. John Sanmez, dude, you know, and, and <laughs> you might watch four hours of video and you get 10 minutes of really good stuff. Also, because people are asking him questions that are not, you know, I don't care about the engine of a Tesla and how that kind of, it doesn't relate to, to me. Right. right. Um, and so what I thought was, wow, wouldn't it be cool if somebody just, I wish I just had those 10 minutes instead of yeah. having to watch the four hours, right? And like a typical entrepreneur is like, well, there's a problem, there's an opportunity here, right? I'm gonna go solve it instead of just complain. And so that's what I started doing with the videos of every day, almost, we have a new video every weekday of a different celebrity, entrepreneur, athlete, uh, somebody who's had success and distill down 10 things from all of their content. So we do the work to sift through all the interviews and all the content and pull together the points that we feel are most relevant and put that into a video uh for the book i did it for two reasons one a lot of people have been asking for it uh and we took the 40 most popular videos on the channel uh for the top 10 so the people that got the most views got the most attention got the most awareness um so it's steve jobs and warren buffett and elon musk and all of these big name people and i put it into a book but as the steve jobs top 10 video is 40 minutes yeah right and so some people are happy to sit through that and some people want it in a faster mode too so in the book we distilled it down so that there's two rules per page and i actually don't want people to read the book cover to cover because right. you'll end up getting tons of inspiration ideas but then it's easy for that to to leave you what i want people to do is actually just read one page a day like here are two of the greatest things steve jobs has ever said in his life like Take three minutes just to think about that. Like maybe reflecting on it might lead to an insight for you, right? And if you spent five minutes every morning, you you take two minutes to just read the two points and then three minutes to think about it. And then you do that every day. If you're surrounding yourself with two of the most genius ideas from some of the most iconic people who've had success in the world, if you did that every day, that's how you started your day, like your life will be unrecognizable. Like if you're feeding right. that into your head every single morning, and I did it for myself, like this was my theory, this is my test. I'm gonna try it on me. And I liked it. This is how I start my day. I never yeah. wanted to make this a book, but it's like, okay, well, if it's a one page a day book, I, I might be able to get around to that. And I liked it. And I use it myself. And so now it's like, okay, this works for me. I want to share it with my community. That's awesome. I, and I love that approach to, to doing it that way. Because I think, you know, one of the things, you know, there's, there's people who are readers and there's people who aren't readers, but a lot of people who aren't readers, it's like too overwhelming. They're like, oh, you know, you know, and they can't really, and they buy a lot of books. They don't read a lot of books, but the idea of like, okay, just one page a day, just go through one and just, you know, you're getting, and you're, and it's compact, right? Because you're, I like that idea of having the, the rule on each page. Because then it's like, you're, it's not like, you know, a, a book that has 20 or 30 pages in a chapter and you sit down and you're like, ah, I don't really have time to read 20 or 30 pages. And you don't want to leave off half a thought in a chapter. So it's like, if it's really like, okay, all I have to do is read this one page. I'm going to get a benefit from it today. I, I really like that, that approach to it. So it's one of the most frustrating things for me is having to put a book down in the middle of a chapter. Or, yeah. or at least in the middle of a break point, like a dot, 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 or something somewhere that I can just break and come back to the next day. And those books that are 30, 40 pages in between, it's like, ah, I'm waiting. And then I'm reading the same page over again and I lose my train of thought. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I designed it for myself because maybe I have ADD when I'm reading, but also, uh, you know, my wife is, is, uh, English is her second language. And so a lot of people watch my channel from all over the world and I wanted to make it something that was easy for people to be able to pick up, understand, apply to their life. And uh, whether you want to read one page or more, like there's always a place to come back to and you can put it down at any time. Even though exactly. your one word was is similar. The first mm -hmm. book is you could stop it. There's tons of breaks 
in yeah. the book so that you could pick it up, read as much as you want, put it down and, and kick, uh, take it the next day and you're, you're back on track. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I, I did the same thing with both of my books. They have like 60, 70 chapters in them simply because I just want it to be like, you know, so you can get through a chapter, you know what I mean? A couple thousand words even in, you know, but you know, because everyone does this, right? I don't know, at least I do. Like when I'm reading a book, like I'm reading this one book right now and it's like, I'm scanning ahead. I'm like, flip, 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 or, you know, or going ahead in the Kindle, look ahead. And I'm like, when is the end of the chapter? Yeah, it's just yeah, like, I hate you it. Know? I know. <laughs> I feel it, you, man. It's kind of meaningless because it doesn't, you know, but, but you just want to have that mental break. Like, okay, this thought is complete. And it'd be like a run on paragraph that goes forever. So, well, I, I got to say something, uh, you know, to, to, uh, to, to everyone watching, like one of the things, you know, I think uh, about that I've noticed about your success, Evan, is, uh, you know, just, just for an example, I, I think I've always been really surprised. Like there's a lot of people that might reach out to me and, and you know, obviously you've got a big channel and an audience and, you know, I'm, I'm happy to, it's a, a beneficial for me to promote you as, you know, as well as a mutual thing. But, um, but there's a lot of people that reach out to me and I'm like, ah, you know, or read my book and, and I, you know, I, and I don't, but, but one of the reasons why, like, I think you're so irresistible, <laughs> if, if I could use that word, is because you genuinely uh, project uh, and, and I think, and I think genuinely care about the, the other, the, the people that, uh, that you're, uh, that, that, you know, that you're associated with, that you're, um, that you're, you're asking for something or that you're, you know, you're giving back all the time because I noticed like, you know, um, what I think when I did, when I had you on for your first book, like there were multiple YouTube channels where you mentioned me or YouTube videos where you mentioned me at the end, or you showed my, a clip of, of me promoting your book. And that was, I mean, my channel was much smaller. It might be half the size at that point. So there was really no, you know, intrinsic benefit for you doing that. And even, you know, just, just today, when we got on the call today, you know, before we turned it on, you're like, Oh, I just watched your 2018, you know, simple programmer trailer. And you know what I mean? And so it's like, uh, you know, I think you really do a good job of not, and I'm going to say giving off the impression, but it's not just giving off the impression of really actually caring about the other people, which, which makes them, you know, which makes you irresistible, I, I think, to, to people. And so I just wanted to say that because I think, I think less, uh, like, I see that side because I'm, I'm subject to it, right? Because I get the emails, if they're not, you know, from your team or, or whatever, and I see the comments that, that, that you, when you give a shout out to me, and, and how you how you interact. But I think a lot of people that maybe watch your channel, they don't realize that there's this, this whole whole thing. And so this, uh, this idea of, like, you know, I think a lot of people sometimes get this jaded idea of success and they're like, you get success by stepping on the necks of people. And it's not true. You get success by giving people value. And, and, and you know, you're, you're just a great example of that. So I just want to say that. Well, thanks, man. I, I appreciate that. I, I think, uh, I mean, I owe that to my parents. There's a picture of them on my wall behind me. And I'm like eight years old in that picture. Uh, I think, uh, you know, it's not a strategy. I think it is a winning strategy, but I just, I like to do it. And I think, yeah. I think, I think, I mean, I think the sad thing is you can get ahead in some industries by stepping on people's necks. Um, I just don't want to. And even if that was a, a negative, like e even if that was the way to do it, I just wouldn't do it. Like I still yeah. look at my channel. If I made the top 10 stupidest things Donald Trump has ever said, or the top, like, like uh, just negative, right? If I, if I right. threw a bunch of crap at people, my channel would probably be bigger than it is right now. Like people love eating that stuff up. I just don't want to do it. Exactly. Like I'm choosing to do it my way. And even, even if it's a negative, even if, even if it holds back my growth, it's just, it feels right. And so right. that's eventually how I'm going to win. And so, uh, I mean, I get the same vibe from you. It's it, it, we've known each other for a while now, then a bunch of whole collaborations back and forth. Um, and I think for the people who who have you know the good soul and want to win that way, it's just a great example to show that you can. Right. Yeah. And you know, and I, you make an excellent point. It's also you know what you when you wake up in the morning when you go to bed at night and you know you 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 build something, but is it something that you're you're proud of? Like you can build something big, but if you're not proud of it, then what does it what does it really mean? Uh, and and you can see that. I mean, you can see people that have integrity. I really like you know you you brought up the the, the Trump. Uh, I remember you did a video on on the top ten, you know, for for Trump, and people lost their shit over it. They got really upset over this, and like, you know, I I thought the way you responded, like, you held your ground. It's like, you know, this is 
whether you like them or not. And, and, and again, I mean, even just probably when you were thinking of going through that, like you could have been very biased and impartial and, and, and said, uh, I'm not going to touch this subject because that will piss people off and it won't be good. But, but you said, no, this is real. Like, this is like, I'm doing this. I'm profiling all these successful people. I'm going to do this one too. So, uh, you know, I thought that was it, to me that like shine of integrity. It's like, okay, you know, yeah, you know, whether you like them or not, it doesn't matter. It's it's a matter of like, can we be objective, and and uh, and and then when you are objective, like, what's going to happen? Are you going to buckle and crumble, or are you going to stand your ground? And and you did, you you proved it. So, well, we've done three volumes of Donald Trump now, so we've, we've got yeah. to go through that a couple of times. Uh, my view is always, you you could learn from people who you disagree with. You could learn exactly. from people who you absolutely hate. And so, you know, I'm Canadian. I don't have a I don't have a vote in the election. I don't get to pick the next president. Um, you know, I disagree with a lot of what Trump says and stands for. Um, and I think, though, like to just discount him and not try to learn from him is 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 me being ignorant. Right. Like, here's a man who's had success in the business world, who's become the president of the most powerful country in the world. Like, maybe there's something I can learn from him, even if I like Steve Jobs is on my wall. You know, I'm not going to take parenting advice of how he treated his daughter and all that. Like, that's not who yeah. I look to as my role model for parenting. But can I learn from him? Yes. Can you learn from Trump? Yes. Anybody who's had success, who's done something anywhere close to your field, you can learn from to help you be better. And so uh, everything that's in that any of the Trump videos that we've done have all been positive. Like, here's something like if you if you if it wasn't Trump on that, it was somebody else saying these same words you might be inspired. Like you take Trump out and you put Oprah in using the same words. Like that's a great video. Right. And so just being able to hear the message, I think, um, I think is important. So that's why we've done it. Uh, and I profiled lots of people who I disagree with yeah. um, on, on a couple things, but I can still learn from something, something from them to help me be better. So that's the point. Yeah. Painter rubs a lot of people the wrong way. <laughs> Who's that? Uh, Pena. Uh, what's his name? Uh, um, oh, Dan Pena. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Dan yeah. Pena. Yeah. Yeah, 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 but, yeah. Uh, yeah. But you know, it's like it's kind of. But 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 you're you've got the right attitude. I, I think that's the thing. Is it's like you can learn from. And and you know the other I think piece of it is like uh, you know whenever I mention Trump and we're gonna get it on this video too, people are like, oh, John, you're such an idiot. Ah, oh, blah 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 blah. I can't believe you're a Trumper or whatever. And it's like my my view is like don't go into anyone's camp, right? I mean, like you look at people and you say, oh, okay, this is good. And this is great. And I'll take this from it. Just like you said with, with Steve jobs. But if you're like, just a, you know, a, don't be a follower, like, be, you know, be, you can respect some people and their thoughts, but you don't just like go all in into someone's camp. And I think unfortunately today, so many people have developed this mindset where it's like, I just either like, I, it's either love or hate, right? It's like, it's like so divisive instead of saying, okay, well, you know what? People are human and they have, you know they have failures and they have you know good sides and bad sides and we just you know we don't have to like totally like dismiss someone or we don't have to totally just follow and love everything you know that elon musk says right he's got his flaws you know it's like uh it's unfortunate but um but it's good i think the more objective people that that are able to do you know stuff like you do and and just say look, look we can learn from anyone i i think that that helps to to you know, decrease that sentiment a little bit. So, yeah, uh, I, I know I got to hop off quickly uh, soon for another call, but just quickly on that, I would say um, you can even agree to disagree. Like this is my stance. I haven't budged yeah. from that since I started. I believe I could, I have Kanye West up on my wall. Like I, that guy's <laughs> crazy, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but I learned from him. Right. And, and, and if you hate Kanye West and, or you don't agree with my philosophy, it's okay. Like, I'm not going to try to convince you and I don't have to yell at you and say, John, you're, you're the dumbest guy in the world. Like we don't need to get into that level. I respect that's your opinion. I just feel differently. And so I'm running the channel the way I want to do it. My intent is exactly. never to, to insult or harm or put anyone down. Um, this is just my philosophy. And, and I think with that approach, without getting into the, the mud and the dirt, people for the most part appreciate it. Yeah, I totally agree. All right. I got, uh, you know, sad to see you go because I'd love to talk all day. But um, I want to make sure that you guys, uh, you know, take a take a chance, take a moment, go and grab uh, top ten rules for success. Go subscribe to Evan's channel if you haven't already. I'm sure that you have if you're on my channel. If not, go subscribe. You're, you're gonna you're gonna like the content. And uh, where, where's the best place? You want them to get the book from Amazon? Is that the best place, or do you have a direct that you'd rather them go? 
No, Amazon's great. If they're picking up the book, Amazon's the best place. Okay. And remember, you know, I'll tell I'll say this as an author. Leave a review. Yeah. That, thanks, that really guys. helps. That's like the extra mile. You know, if you find this valuable, <laughs> go in fact go buy the book, leave the review, and then you can fill in the comments, you know, fill it in later when after you've read the book, right? You can this way you've got that place marker there. <laughs> I love it. All Thank right. you, John. I appreciate it, man. All right, Evan. Take care, man. Cheers.